Texas pounded Oklahoma. Holy cow, is Oklahoma missing Jeff Levy or what? Jeff Levy just torched Georgia secondary. I know we talked about Georgia secondary not looking good the last couple weeks, but they just torched them. All right, with Michael Van Buren and the Bozos, right? Like, literally. Now you got some good. You, oh, you got yeah, Coleman, I, I, that, that UTEP yeah. transfer. There's some talent yeah. there. Kelly Akari, yeah. You got, you got some guys, but, man, it's Oklahoma team. And, and the I was surprised that Jackson Darnold didn't come out there in the second half. Were you? I was kind of waiting because, and I get that, like, his strength is his arm, his right arm, right? And you don't have the receivers in healthy to be able to take advantage of anything Texas could give you. So I can see where you thought, but they must really, really believe that the rest of the way, right, Michael Hawkins gives them the best chance to win football games because if they did not, we're not totally convinced of that, I would, why not throw back Jackson Arnold? It sounds like he's doing everything right behind the scenes. It sounds like he's still staying engaged and was still ready to go out there. I don't know. I was not impressed with Hawkins. I know he didn't have an easy job or easy situation around him. And obviously if you go down those, 18 points right there at halftime. Like it's just, it's going to be tough. And that's just not where he's at as a passer right now to be able to sit back in the pocket, withstand the pass rush from Texas and throw a good ball consistently. I was impressed with Texas though, right? Oklahoma came out and you saw their defensive game plan, their offensive game plan. They were throwing wrinkles here and there, and they were just (laughs) throwing everything at Texas and credit to Texas for staying calm and battling with standing the storm getting a big stop here and there as they were losing the field position battle. And all of a sudden, this is what great teams do. Oklahoma showed one weakness, and boom, Texas just jumped on them, and they did not look back. Very impressed. Very impressed with Texas. I know it wasn't pretty in that first half or for all the entire game, but it's also Red River. Like, it's not going to be pretty. And I thought Wisner ran the ball well. He was physical. Blue ran the ball physical. Right, These are good athletes, good defenders that Oklahoma's trotting out there that were bouncing off of these running backs. And obviously, Wingo and, and Golden made some big plays. Hopefully, Isaiah Bond is healthy. Didn't sound – I don't, didn't really get an update on that, so we'll see what happens because they need him going forward. Silas Bolden had a huge hustle play, which was awesome. And obviously, his putter turn, you know, aspects what he can bring for you. And then the tight end, Gunnar Helm, is kind of a revolution for them. Obviously, losing Jatavian Sanders, a lot of people looked at the Alabama transfer to come in and pick up where he left off, but Gunnar Helm is awesome. So, yeah, super, super impressed with Texas, super impressed with what they did, and obviously Oklahoma has a lot of things to work on. They yeah. just got beat. So, do you think, because also at halftime, I, I don't know if it was, like, going into halftime, he was getting interviewed, but he basically was like, no, we're gonna, like, he was asked, like, oh, are we going to see Jackson on the second half? He's like, no, we're, we're Hawkins, it's our guy. You think Jackson Arnold's had conversations with coaches where he wants to shut it down so he can get it's, that red shirt? I don't – listen, I was so I was driving for some of that day. I, was, I had to get back here on an interview yesterday but or on, on Friday. So I – when I was watching Kirk Herbstreit and Fowler, I don't know if it was Herbstreit or Fowler or the talk radio host that I was listening to – or the, like the, the radio host, the play, play guy I was listening to. One of them said that – He's been doing. They were they, the coaching staff. Everyone they talked to in Oklahoma was still talking very highly of Jackson Arnold as a person. Yeah. I don't know if that would really be the case if he was to shut it down and to redshirt. I think he redshirted last year, though, right? So it's not like he can. Or did he play? F- uh, I'm gonna look that yeah, up yeah, real actually, quick because that redshirted actually. Now that I think about it, but I mean, look, the NIL opportunities for him if he does transfer are still tremendous. So there is still. There is still, you know, an incentive, I guess, to shut down, sort of. But I don't know. It, just my tinfoil hat. Just my tinfoil hat. I don't actually believe that, that that's what Jackson Arnold did, right? So I don't want to no, no. Don't, don't, my words get misconstrued, like, thinking that I think that. I just think it's an interesting talking point because he was so quick to be like, no, we're not putting Jackson Arnold. And then they didn't put in Jackson Arnold. And it's like, okay, well, considering that you're down, how many points? And. Your true freshman quarterback is just absolutely getting obliterated. Wouldn't it be nice, you know, instead of ruining your freshman quarterback's complete confidence, maybe you give this other young guy on the team reps as well. So I don't know. And he got benched because he 
was turning the ball over, right? And especially Am at I the lost? end of the first half. And he kept it. And August had the fumbles and he had the others. And so I was like, what, what's going on here? That, that's where I, that's where I think there had, there, there is a serious conviction on that staff that thinks Hawkins is the guy going forward. And it's not Arnold. I know Arnold hasn't looked great this year, but very shocked, very shocked. Obviously I don't think it mattered. I don't think, the game would have been closer. It wouldn't have really changed it, but it's more about Oklahoma going forward. And you got a South Carolina team next week that <laughs> talk about pinning their ears back and getting after quarterback. Now, obviously, yeah, with the, the lack of receivers, right, it does favor a guy who is able to create on his own with his legs, right, and to give you some kind of dynamic in the running game. But still, just very interesting. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I don't know. So – Moving forward, Oklahoma still has a brutal schedule. Texas still has all their goals ahead of them. Tough remaining opponents on their schedule. Georgia next week. Vanderbilt. <laughs> and, yes! Uh, I, yes! Oh, and by the way, at Arkansas, too, I not that – Yeah, that's scary. Like, I, I, anyone going into Arkansas is not loving their – is not going to love that. Not going to – I absolutely chalk that up. And especially if they're fighting hard right now for, for Pittman and, and Bobby P. Yeah, I agree with you. Also, too, for the South Carolina Oklahoma game, I'm just gonna let everyone know. I already took the under that game. Whatever. It's like Iowa, Minnesota. It's the Naval Academy game. Twenty one and a half. Now here here here's where it goes wrong though. Turnovers. 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 And it's, well, it could still happen, but I, I just I think these the coaches range, know they can't turn the ball over. In the range of outcomes, I think uh those turnovers happen, you know, further out in that deviation. So I, I think it's more likely than not that you, this thing is under 17, 10, 17, 13. What's the line? Is it 30 something? 41 and a half. Oh, just under 20s? Oh, maybe. Yeah, uh... That's all I'm saying. I, it's just Listen, out there. Here's I'll say this. If Jackson, Ar- if, it, if it announced today, Jackson Arnold's the starter, does that make you a little bit more nervous? Uh, I don't yes. know. Yeah, because, I think yes. Turnovers, Jack- potential big plays through the air. But Jackson Arnold, neither quarterback has done well under pressure this season. Neither quarterback. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. I I don't think honestly. I don't think the line would move that much. Actually, I don't think the the odds makers would change their odds. But I think people would move money around depending on that. But uh. I think uh, what did that total open at? It is a shame, yeah, though. I, I will I say 41, 41 and a half is I think the number. So up, yeah, up, that'll be my best bet. So people watching the show are getting rewarded. So well, I will say go. it's a shame, real quick. Last thing here on this game that Oklahoma is not healthy. I, I don't. I do not think we are seeing the best of Oklahoma this year. It's a shame that they're coming in the SEC, and I think they really could have given a lot of teams trouble this year. If they were completely healthy and, you know, obviously playing well offensively, not happening right now. It's a good change with some guys coming back with maybe got clicking stuff. The gets in his bag, whatever it may be. But I a little disappointed in Oklahoma, but also I just a little bit sad that they aren't fully healthy. It's a shame that they, they really aren't able to compete. It's not really fair if that makes sense. 